Hi, and welcome to Dumpster PC's unboxing and overview of the 990 FXA D3 motherboard, which, as you can see, is what's sitting right in front of me. Now, this board actually comes from Gigabyte's performance range in 2011, and the front of the box has a bunch of branding and marketing that Gigabyte's decided they want to show you as the first thing. So prominently shown is the Ultra Durable 2 Classic logo, which suggests that you get low RDS MOSFETs, so you get lower resistance MOSFETs that should have lower power consumption. And it actually uses a 4 plus 1 phase VRM scheme for the CPU power. It also has Gigabyte's 333 onboard acceleration, which is their branding for three things that they've combined, being three times USB power, USB 3.0, and SATA 3.0, which is SATA 6 gigabit. It also features their dual BIOS with hybrid EFI technology. And basically what that is, is their dual BIOS is obviously you get two BIOS chips, there's two little ROMs on the board, so there's a backup BIOS and a main BIOS. So if you happen to misflash your main BIOS, it'll detect that and then boot to the backup BIOS. And the hybrid EFI technology, well that's a bit out of focus, let's pull that out again. The hybrid EFI technology is basically Gigabyte using their traditional BIOS. So this isn't a UEFI firmware board, this is using the old school traditional BIOS, except they've incorporated an EFI bootloader. So you'll be able to boot hard disks that are bigger than that 2.2 terabyte limit that traditional BIOSes had trouble dealing with. It also has their 108 decibel signal-to-noise ratio audio codec implementation. And as you can see, as part of that Ultra Durable 2 Classic, you get solid-state aluminium Japanese-made capacitors. And that's, they're rated for 50,000 hours. So what can you use with this motherboard? So this motherboard has an AM3 Plus socket, and that's the black socket, we'll look at that in a moment. But you can actually run all AM3 CPUs as well as AM3 Plus, which means the FX series that just got released a month ago. And this is a 9 series chipset board, it's actually a 990FX board, as you can tell from the model name. So this board, let's have a look at the sticker on the side. There you can see, uh, you might not be able to, but this is a Revision 1.0 board. And it contains the combination of a 990FX North Bridge and an SB950 South Bridge. So, let's flip the board over and then see what the back says. So here Gigabyte's got a picture of the board. We won't spend too much time on that because you'll get to see that soon. And they've pulled out six features that they want you to know about. So you've got the three times USB power. So you've got three times more current coming out of these USB ports than what were previously on boards. You've got your solid Japanese capacitors rated for 50,000 hours. And your SATA 3.0 ports. SATA 6 gigabit. You've also got your USB 3.0. And we talked about the dual BIOS with hybrid EFI technology. And right up the top in big writing is your 108 decibels of signal noise ratio audio codec. And here's an array of little marketing widgets at the bottom. You've got your 333 onboard acceleration, your on off charge, 40% charging, faster, that courtesy of the three times USB power. And on-off meaning that you can actually charge while the system is in suspend or shut down. Once again, you've got your Japanese-made capacitors. Your Easy Energy Saver, which is a little Windows utility that you can run. And it will alter the number of phases that are being used. So you can save a bit of power. And as you can see here, the board is actually certified for both Crossfire X, ATI's multi-GPU implementation, and NVIDIA's SLI. And this is new to the 900 series boards. The 800 series boards weren't actually SLI certified. 
and you've got the last three XHD, Cloud Overclock and Auto Green. So, let's open up the board, the box, I'm sorry, and see the board and see what's inside. So inside, we have my tax invoice. We'll put that to the side. We have one back plate, still in its plastic. We have a gigabyte case sticker. If you want to show off that the board inside your your box is a gigabyte. We've got a multilingual manual with a CD. Let's take that out. So this is your driver CD, and as you can see, it's actually shared by all 9 series, 8 series, and 7 series boards. So you might ask, what about the 7 series boards? That's kind of old. Well, there are boards that are still coming out with, say, the 760G chipset. So they would also get this driver CD. And here's your motherboard manual. And it is in English, which is always good. And it's got a section on the BIOS at the back and the RAID setup. It tells you all about the connectors, what they do, where they are, and the pinouts. It tells you how to install a CPU. Now this, I like this page in Gigabyte Motherboard Manual because it actually gives you a layout of what's connected to what on the board. And this shows you that on this board, so we know that there are 42 PCI Express lanes coming off the 990FX Northbridge. Now I know, you know, Northbridge normally comprises a memory controller. That's on the CPU now, but I'll still call it a Northbridge. We've got two PCI Express 16 slots that actually have 16 lanes going to them. Two PCI Express 16 slots that only have four lanes electrically going to them and the e-tron USB 3 controller that's all hanging off the north bridge. Hanging off the SB950 south bridge. I'm not sure if you can read this. If you can't, we'll have a look at the board also. But hanging off the south bridge, there are two PCI Express by one slots and the Realtek RTL 8111E gigabit ethernet controller. And also the one PCI slot. And as far as I know, Gigabyte's one of the few manufacturers that shows you that, which I think is cool. You also get your multilingual instruction guide. So this is the quick, and also in many languages, put your CPU here, put your memory here, push this button, and all good things will happen. You get four SATA cables two of which are actually right angled and in each of these little plastic bags here you get one right angled and one non right angled SATA cable. So there's two, there's the second two. You get one SLI connector for two cards and then finally we get to the board and the board is underneath cardboard protective layer that everything we just took out was sitting on. And the board is in the static bag. There it is. Let's get the box out of the way. So, here is the board. And after the break, we'll come back and show you the board up close and personal.